Hi, I'm Tim. In this video, I'm going to show you how to go from a blank piece of paper to this. I'll show you how to design your own airplane, come up with the size of the wing, the tail moments, the control throws so that you can design, build, and fly your own RC model airplane. Let's get to it. When we build model airplanes, we build them from full-size plans. The plans are full-size, so we know the size of all the components, the parts, the formers. Transfer them onto balsa foam board to construct the full-size airplane. In previous videos, I've shown you how to read a set of plans. I've also shown you how to build a complete model, the Pronto, from a set of plans. Links for these are in the description. But in this video, what I'm going to show you is how to come up with the dimensions of the plan. How big should the wing be? What should the wing cord be? How much control throw do you need? How, what, what is the center of gravity location? So that you can go from a blank sheet of paper with this knowledge, lay out an airplane plan properly, fill it in later with the structural components, build it, and fly your own RC model airplane. Recently, I decided to build my first twin engine RC airplane. And so what I had to do was figure out how to get the two motors to working. I have a video on that using two ESCs and two batteries. Once I got the two motors working, I wanted to fly it in an airplane. There are not too many, if any, kits out there of twin um, engine RC aircraft that you can build. So I decided just to design my own twin RC airplane, build that and fly it with the um, two electric motors. I call it the Twinster. These are some pictures of the Twinster. It came out very nice. You saw it fly at the beginning of the video. It truly flies well for an RC model airplane. So to draw up this uh, twin engine RC airplane, I wanted to have a fairly simple design. And what I mean by simple is it's going to be straight lines. There are no curves on the airplane. You can add curves if you want, but I just wanted to make it um, simple to go together fairly quickly with all straight lines. I also decided to draw the plan first in pencil, just on a regular sheet of paper. That way I could just do it a little bit quicker, see how things flow out. My plan for these types of designs, because the design will evolve as I build it. Once I've done the paper plan, I build it with necessary changes, flight test it, make changes from there. At that time, I'll use um, QCAD to draw up a set of computer-aided design plans, which is what I did here. The QCAD, QCAD plans are, are available for download in the description. So let's start off with that blank sheet of paper and where do we start and how do we start for designing this RC model airplane. A very important item for drawing this plans are your drawing on the plan has to be to scale. Now it doesn't have to be exact down to the millimeter crack, but it has to look okay. Because it's surprising that when you design these Sport Flyer RC airplanes, I use a method that I call TLAR, that looks about right, T-L-A-R. There's an old adage in aircraft design, if, if an aircraft looks good, it's probably going to fly good. For Sport Flyer aircraft where you're not having canards and unusual forward swept wings, if it looks fairly normal and okay, it'll pro that's, it's a good indication it'll probably fly okay. So what you do is a factor method. Um, what happens is a small sheet of paper is going to be a big airplane. What I do is each inch on my paper equals eight inches on the real model. So if half of a wing is three inches long, three inches times eight, that means the full scale uh, model will be a 24 inch half wingspan. So that way you can visualize how big the aircraft is gonna be because you're drawing it to scale on the paper. And we'll demonstrate this here with my hand-drawn plan. You can see where the placement is of the tail and things like that. Also, one of the main things that you're worried about for any airplane design, RC models, full scale RC models for this video, is what's the weight of the aircraft? You really want to keep the weight as low as possible. Because this is a very simple design, there's no extra stuff on it, and I'm going to build the entire airplane out of 3 16 inch foam board, it's going to be as light as possible. It's, there'll be a little bit of plywood for the firewalls, but because the plane will be built out of foam board, I'm really not too worried about the overall weight because the foam board keeps that weight surprisingly low. Now, 
Let's take a look at the pencil sketch and I'll walk you through how I made the wing, the tail moments, the control throws from this sketch that I actually used to build the airplane. Okay, so let's go over the pencil plan for the twinster that I drew here. And let's uh, begin at the beginning, as they say. What I decided to do with this one was to have a fairly ordinary looking airplane. What I mean by ordinary is a low bonded wing, just the tail surfaces here. This is just a dummy ca uh, canopy for display and just a square wing. It kind of used as an inspiration, the Aztec twin um, engine airplane uh, that is a looks somewhat similar to this just to make it a fairly ordinary twin engine design. So the first step when I'm designing this airplane to just to start the process, I like to figure out how big the wing is going to be. Okay. So what happens is, is this going to be a small model? Is it going to be a big model? How big is it going to be? Small models um, are a little bit trickier to fly. We've got two motors here, the batteries. You're going to be better off having a fairly mid-sized model. The other thing I think about, and this is the God's honest truth, I have to make sure the airplane is going to fit in the trunk of my car. Five feet is the absolute maximum wingspan to comfortably fit in there. The other thing I'm going to do, because I want to, is I'm going to glue the engine onto the fuselage just so it's all one unit. So what I, that leads me to is about a 44 inch wingspan is going to be right for this model or each half is going to be 22 inches. So now we have the wingspan, 22 inches on this side, 22 inches on the other side. We have to figure out the cord or how wide the wing's going to be. So what I decided to do with this one was just pick a cord of about 8 inches using TLR that looks about right. I think that's reasonable for a cord. You could make a little bit less, but then you have less wing area. And if in doubt, you could make the cord, the width of the wing, a little bit greater. For the ailerons, I just pick one inch, which should be sufficient um, area for the throw, and the throw is up and down 30 um, degrees is about right for what we're going to do for this airplane. Once we have the wing established, the next thing is to determine the fuselage dimensions. The first thing is to determine the width of the fuselage. I picked a two inch width for the fuselage. This is shown up here. Two inches works well aesthetically. It looks pretty good and you can fit two batteries side by side of the nose. If you want to make it a little bit wider for three inches, by all means do so. It will not affect the flying qualities of the aircraft and there's plenty of room for the electronics with a two inch width. The other thing you're going to have to do the fuselage going to the side view here is determine what type of tapers you want. This is the first time we're going to do a taper. So we go from the wing leading edge up here. You can see it tapers up just a little bit. The fuselage is three inches wide. Here the fuselage is about two inches wide. So that works out okay there. I originally started with the length of the fuselage nose as five inches. That was looked about right. I then realized the center of gravity is going to be here. 25% back for the wing leading edge or two inches back for the wing leading edge. To give me more ability to balance the model, I extended the nose to six inches. The length of the nose for this twin makes absolutely no difference how the airplane flies uh, because there's no motors on that nose. You could make it seven inches if you wanted to. Six inches I think is about right. And then the nose section here that's curved, you just carve foam. Again, the shape of the nose, this distance has no effect on the flight qualities of the aircraft. For the length of the um, aft fuselage behind the wing, again, I used about TLR. I think that looks about right. If you're in doubt, you can make this a little bit longer. It will make the model more stable. If it's shorter, if the stab is closer up like this, it's going to be just a little bit more twitchy in pitch. But this worked out just fine. This, again, is TLR for the stabilizer and the elevator one inch thick, uh, one inch wide. I tend, my design habit is to make these tail surfaces too large. They just don't look right. I think this is about right. One change you'll see on the CAD drawings is on the tail right here. I'd originally made this a three channel version without any rudder because there's no landing gear. So there's, no, there's not a huge need for rudder. What you usually use a rudder for with multi-engine aircraft is an engine failure. If you, if you lose an engine on a twin engine RC airplane, just reduce the power to idle and land is your best bet to maintain control. I did wind up putting a rudder on here, so that had to extend a little bit behind. You'll see that on the CAD drawings. Also note that I put the aileron behind, excuse me, the elevator behind the aft section of the fuselage. It just makes it very easy to go up and down um, as you uh, build the aircraft. As I mentioned earlier, 
just a profile canopy, which I have a video on uh, just for decorative effect. And what I've done is off this drawing is I've measured all the distances with that factor method. Uh, so in other words, from here to here would be 1.5 inches times 8 equals 12 inches. I have a bunch of dimensions that I can draw onto the foam board to recreate this design on the foam board. One other thing on this uh, pencil drawing, because it's so simple, I didn't include it. I have formers here, a former here, the plywood firewalls here, and a former here, maybe back here, see, see how much strength is needed. These are very easy to measure off the um, plane as you build it. If this is two inches wide, you can you just measure that from the formers and do the formers from there. I'd like to also point out, just for simplicity, I put the stabilizer just on top of the fuselage. The stab could be here, it could be in the middle here, it could be at bottom. This is just the easiest place to put it here. Another very important feature is the wing incidence. The wing incidence is how far the wing is tilted up to the fuselage center line. This would be zero incidence. This would be a positive couple degrees incidence. Zero positive. For all of my model airplane designs, I use about two to three degrees of positive incidence. The plane just flies better for a sport flyer with a a little bit of positive incidence. The incidence is measured with the um, wing airfoil. For the airfoil, the best uh, uh, selection for a sport flyer is a Clark Y airfoil. You can Google that. It's a very easy um, air, uh, airfoil to draw up. It's got a flat bottom if you're building for balsa. Just a very well-behaving Clark Y airfoil for a sport flyer. The cord line is simply an imaginary line drawn from the wing leading edge to the tailing edge. That determines what the incidence is. So if the cord line is zero aligned with the fuselage center line, you want it slightly positive. That will have a better flying model. The incidence for the stabilizer and the fin is zero. And when you glue in the wing or, or make the mounting correct, you're just going to have to eyeball that slightly positive incidence if you don't have an incident meter. But I just eyeballed mine and it came out fine. So now we've gone over how I come up with those dimensions. We're going to be using foam board. Let's talk a little bit of detail on the two engine nacelles on the wings. And I think the best way to do that is to just demonstrate that on the model itself. So to go over the motor placement and what I was thinking about from a design perspective, it's probably easiest just to use the actual airplane itself. So what happens is you have a center line for the motor right here. How far out should that be? You want the motor as close to the airplane as possible just for adverse yaw, um, uh, situations. However, you've got to have enough clearance with a prop that it's not going to hit the fuselage. So that's literally what you do. You figure out what prop you're going to use. Just put the uh, motor in in place and that'll determine the center line for the motor. The firewalls, I use 1 16th inch um, uh, plywood. You can use one eighth if you want. And what I did for a little bit of strength, it's hard to see, but I cut a slot into the wing itself. So the plywood actually inserted into that slot with epoxy to hold everything in place. And it's covered up by the um, covers here, but there's plywood reinforcing on each side to the top of the wing, to the fuselage to hold everything in place. And that worked out fine. These engine cells sides are just kind of cut to fit to look good. There's nothing in here except the motor and its wires. Also, the way it worked out that was beneficial, the motor wires are long enough to reach into the um, fuselage here to the electronic speed control. And I have a battery hatch here to put in the batteries, the batteries being far forward next to each other for the center gravity considerations. So that's what I did for the motor. The main thing is just be sure that you have prop clearance. Also, if you wanted a new design to mount the wing on top of the fuselage, you could do that. Just for appearance sake, I made it down below like this. The mounting uh, for the engines is zero degrees up or down, zero degrees left to right. I didn't bother with any right or down thrust on this. It seemed to work out fine. And again, using washers and back, even if the firewall installation is a little bit off, the washers can true up the motor so it's in the correct location. Obviously, you want the aileron servos on top because there's no landing gear, so you don't scuff them up when you're landing, and this worked out fine. One other thing that I did, this is kind of the design as you build it process. You'll see, uh, this is just some um, drywall tape. The build video of this shows exactly how you join the wings, but this is glued on to the saddle here. There's not a ton of gluing space for this. 
So what I did was I put another layer of foam board here just to have a reinforcement on the saddle to have a little bit more gluing space. And then just to make sure I put in dowels so I have a couple rubber bands going across just so there's no danger of that wing coming off in flight. And that has worked fine so far for this, uh, for this flying model. So as I mentioned, I did the um, pencil drawing here just to uh, transfer the design to the foam board, cut it out, and that's what I did. The straight lines made that very easy. Made a few changes as I'm building the model, easy to do with foam board, then taking this design, this one, getting all the real measurements off there, using QCAD. It was very easy to draw up this uh, QCAD program. This is available for download in the description if you want. There is the ruler here to measure off the size of anything, but with the magic of QCAD, I simply did another drawing where to aid everybody, there are the actual dimensions of this airplane listed all along here. So this is um, one, one foot four inches for the width of the tail. So that makes it very easy to draw this out um, for your model if you wish to do it. The foam wing construction method gives a very good uh, replication of an airfoil shape just as you build it. These are the views of the fuselage sides cut out of the foam board as described on the plans. Uh, just all straight lines, very easy to do. Here's a look at the fuselage going together with some of the formers in place, the top deck and the tail surfaces in place. Initial look at the mounting for the two engines. You can see the firewalls into the wing with the ply reinforcing plates. So that's the process that I use to design RC model airplanes for sport aircraft. Uh, if it looks right, it's probably going to fly right. Some other things for the center of gravity. Um, it worked out fine. Foam board is a very flexible, easy to uh, use material to build these RC models. As you can see from the video, it flew fine. So best of luck with your design efforts, whatever you may decide to do. All right. Beautiful, man. <laughs> <laughs>